We have some fast solar wind, a slow solar storm, and a lot of flare potential on the east limb. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather has been pretty quiet over the past week, but it looks like things are going to change here soon. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, but not a lot of big flare players. In fact, we've been getting mainly pockets of fast solar wind from big coronal holes like this one here, and we have another coronal hole. This one's going to be giving us a pocket of fast solar wind over the next couple days, most likely not going to last all that long and only give us aurora at high latitudes. But as we pay attention region 3863 over the past day or so it fires off a solar storm launch pow right there you can see that it actually you can even see a dimming region up in here the main bulk of this solar storm even though it is in the earth strike zone looks like the bulk of the wind is going up north and also down south of earth but we could get a little bit of a wispy solar storm at earth over the next few days that will be enhancing the, the end tail end of this fast solar wind coming from this coronal hole. Still not expecting all that much activity, but at least it's a bump up from where we were. On top of that, we've been paying close attention to these regions here on the eastern limb. These regions, believe it or not, especially region 3869, are big solar storm producers and are returning regions from last rotation. In fact, as we take a look at our JSOC helioseismology farsighted viewer, we can see these regions here have actually been returning. One of them is region 3844. That's the region that's just rotated into Earth view, and we also have region 3842, which will be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days. So expect amateur radio operators that you could see higher solar flux, bigger radio bursts starting again with big radio blackouts, and we could get some more Earth-directed solar storms over the next couple weeks. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the first. But by the 31st, the moon will be only about 1% illuminated. So if you want to catch some dib objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora or some spooky ghosts for Halloween, well, now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions, up to about a 30% chance of minor storm conditions, and then things will settle down as we move through the fast solar wind. But by the 27th, we could get an opportunity for a solar storm to hit us, and that is going to be kind of on the tail end of that fast solar wind. This is from that Earth directed solar storm that looks pretty wispy, but we could get about a 30, you know, 20 to 30 percent chance of minor storming again. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a chance for a show. And now at mid latitudes, well, we are looking at unsettled conditions for the most part. We have kind of a wind watch going with about a 10 percent chance of minor storm conditions, but likely the polarity just isn't the right way for this coronal hole to give us all that much of a show. And then by the 27th, we could get a 
bit of a chance again with that solar storm possibly hitting. It'll be pretty wispy. I'm giving us about a 15% chance of a minor storm conditions, but likely we're not going to see all that much at all. So Aurora photographers, if you're at mid latitudes, you're likely going to have to sit this one out and wait for the new regions on the east limb to give us a chance for a bigger show. And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. We are sitting in the triple digits, almost up at 200 for solar flux. And it is going to climb over the rest of this week because of those new regions in EarthView that are continuing to rotate uh, on into EarthView from the east limb. NOAA is giving us about a 60% chance of M-class flares at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout. And that means we have moderate noise on the bands and that will continue easily through this week. We're going to see it uh, uptick a little bit, possibly going to about 70, possibly even 75% chance of R1 to R2 level radio blackouts by the end of the week. It depends upon how strong those active regions are as they rotate into EarthView. We even have a small chance right now of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout, and that also may increase. So amateur radio operators expect to have a bit more noise on the dayside radio bands, but things shouldn't be too bad. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. We have sitting in the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. This is also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. And NOAA's giving us only about a 1% chance of, of radiation storms at the S1 to S2 level, which basically means we're all in the clear. So even you frequent flyers and you high risk passengers, and this does include air crew, looks like everything is is going to stay in the green for this week, but next week things might actually start rising once again. So the space weather this week is picking up a little bit compared to last week. We do have a small pocket of fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and we do have a small solar storm chaser. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get a bit of a show, but Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, it's likely going to be pretty weak, so you might need to sit this one out and wait for bigger solar storms. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, while we do have those returning regions on the East Limb that could be big flare players here. They definitely are showing uh, the potential for being big solar storm producers. So expect the noise on the radio bands to rise. Expect radio blackouts to be back on the menu easily over this week and possibly through next week as well. And now GPS users, well, things aren't looking too bad for you right now. We only have some small weak solar storming that's going to be expected, so that shouldn't affect you too much on the night side. And now the day side, well, it looks like we do have some new regions rotating into Earth view that could give us a little bit of a problem, especially near dawn and near dusk. That's where your reception might be a little bit dicey, but overall, things should be pretty good for you. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.